Calvinism is very dangerous. It is wicked. It is very deceitful and subtle. It is shrouded in intellectualism, but it produces this. And nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about the people that sit up at 1 and 2 and 3 in the morning and have done everything the scripture says is required for eternal life, but they have doubt because MacArthur or Piper or Sproul or whoever said that God picks and chooses and it's not your choice. Nothing in the scripture could be further from the truth. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez. And today we're answering another listener submitted question. He emailed us. You can do the same with your Bible questions. Questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. Let's take a look. Ryan said, would simply like to know about predestination. I've heard a lot about that and it's taken away my hope. I know Jesus is Lord. But I even struggle if I even believe in him or not. Not that he is Lord. I know he is, but that I even believed correctly to be saved. There is nothing more helpful to me than knowing I could see Jesus face to face. And I'd cry on my knees just thinking that because I'm horribly disobedient, but it's hard to even try to be obedient when life seems so pointless. Now, He's moved away from the original point here, but the original point is he's having a problem with predestination. And I would conclude the predestination that he's having a problem with is the Calvinistic predestination, which teaches God chooses who will be saved and who will be lost, and it's of no choice of man, which is heresy. (laughs) I've heard so many doctrines. It all confuses me. The only time I have ever had peace was when I was heavily reading my Bible. You got to love that (laughs) because the word does that. I mean, God speaks for himself. Continuing on, not because of works, but because something about his word does something I can't explain in my life. And I think Ryan can't explain it because he's forgetting because of all this other doctrine that's gotten in the way. Uh, He has a spirit nature. If he's put his trust in Jesus Christ um, as the son of God who shed his blood for his sins, Uh, then he has a spirit nature and that Holy Spirit strives against the flesh nature and and desires um, to read and apply the word. So when he's reading and applying the word, the reason why Ryan can't explain it is because he probably doesn't know that this this is him walking in the spirit. Continuing on, Jesus isn't here personally, but his word is like a food that provides me with hope and strength. Even if I don't understand everything, I read perfectly. Also, another really good analysis. I mean, the Bible is compared to as milk and meat and all of that. He concludes with these few statements. I had a pastor tell me because of my continuous sin that God is handing me over to what I want, sin. It killed me completely. Now I think I'm just controlled by evil with no hope. I just don't know what to do because I don't want to die in sin. But how am I supposed to say no if I'm not chosen or picked? Man, I know I'm a sinner, but I'm hopeless. Yeah, uh, this this young man, I don't know if this was my time zone or not, but this email came in at 105 in the morning. And, you know, just we can stop for a second. I want you guys that are, you know, regular listeners to Bible line, and maybe you're even here and you've been here for a little bit, but you're kind of new. This is the kind of work I love to do. Uh, but it also it grieves me when I see this hopelessness. Uh, That is the result of really bad doctrine. And I want to be so clear that Calvinism is very dangerous. It is wicked. It is very deceitful and subtle. It is shrouded in intellectualism, but it produces this. And nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about the people that sit up at 1 and 2 and 3 in the morning And have done everything the scripture says is required for eternal life, but they have doubt because MacArthur or Piper or Sproul or whoever said that God picks and chooses and it's not your choice. Nothing in the scripture could be further from the truth. And it it produces things like this. And even some of you who are haters of our channel and haters of this free grace doctrine, you know it that you question it too. 
And if you don't, you're dishonest to your own belief. And I know that's a little strong, but it's the truth. And this young man needs help. And I wrote him the next morning. It was the first thing I did. I saw the email, I flagged it, got in the office, clickety-clack, typed out a response. So I want to help you understand this here. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. It helps get us out to more people, and there may be people in your life who can be encouraged by it. If you haven't already, hit the red subscribe button and the little notification bell and set it to all so that every time that we post or go live, you get an update. If you have a Bible question, send it to us, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. Let's get back to today's video. I said, hey, Ryan, here is a helpful illustration about predestination. Imagine you are in the market for a plane ticket. You scan the available flights and find one that is going to Tampa. You purchase the ticket, you go to the airport, you redeem your seat on the plane with the ticket. Once you board the flight, it travels to Tampa. Predestination works the same way. Heaven is the destination, it's not the reward. Everyone who wants to go to heaven must buy the ticket, which is believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God who shed his blood, was buried, and rose again to pay for all their sins. Belief secures your ticket to the destination. God predetermined that anyone who believed on his son would go to heaven. Belief is the ticket. The destination does not change because it is guaranteed by the ticket, which is belief on Jesus. God said, all of those who will believe, they will be predestined to be in heaven, to be in my son. God did not say, I'm going to pick you and I'm going to deny you. And that's how it's all going to work. I continue in my response. You cannot change the destination that God has already decided for all those who will believe. Then I said, because I moved off the predestination and I noticed in his email, he's struggling with some sin. There's a comment that he said, and I just want to bring this back up. I had a pastor tell me that because of my continuous sin, that God is handing me over to what I want, which is sin. Now, that is searing the conscience of the believer. If you continually live in that sin, God will hand you over to it. But the difference, I don't know what that pastor meant by it. Is the pastor saying, well, your continuous sin is proof that you're not really saved, which is not true according to the scripture, or is this pastor making a biblical conclusion that there is a sin unto death? And if you don't respond to the chastening hand of God, then you're going to be delivered over to that sin and, and the Lord will take you home. But I wrote him this. Sin is always going to be a problem. Galatians chapter 5 tells us that our flesh and spirit war against each other. Paul said he constantly dealt with his sin nature. And I, I always kind of... I don't even laugh. I just roll my eyes when I hear the Calvinist interpretation of Romans 7 as Paul before he was saved. That makes zero sense. <laughs> he actively says in Romans chapter 7, O wretched man, who will deliver me from this situation? And he says he thanks the Lord Jesus Christ who gives him the victory. And then Paul writes later in 1 Corinthians chapter 50, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57 around there that he thanks God through our Lord Jesus Christ who gives him the victory over sin and death. I mean, Paul struggled too. Ultimate victory over sin, I continue, uh, will be achieved when we are freed from this body and united with the Lord Jesus. In uh, 1 John 3, 1 through 2, is very, very encouraging about that day. And I, I will take time to go there. 1 John is my, it's, I mean, all the books in the Bible are my favorite, but I really like 1 John. There's a lot of practical application. 1 John 3, 1 through 2 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. What's the we shall be? What is that we shall be? When we don't have a sinful nature, when we are just as our Savior is, in glory. But we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What an encouragement. Yes, you're going to have sin in this life. You can't avoid it. James says, the person who knows to do good and chooses not to do it, to him it is sin. And you have a sinful nature that despises any kind of spiritual growth. But you also have a new nature. And you have an opportunity because you've been born of God. And that nature can't sin. Walk in that nature. And if you got sin in your life, my friend Ryan, if you have sin in your life, confess it to the Lord. 
Look at what the scripture says about it. Look at what you have said about it. Change your mind from this disobedience to obedience and God will bless you. I continue on in conclusion. Victory over sin in this life is easy to do, but oftentimes complicated because of our sin nature. When you are tempted to sin, go to God in prayer and ask for help. Then apply scripture to your struggle. This is how Jesus rebuked the temptations of Satan. And this is why I wanted to read my response word for word, because it's very important to notice how Jesus fought that. He didn't go to a self-help plan. Now, he was he <laughs> not like us. He did not have a sinful nature. But he showed us how we resolve the temptation to sin. Know the word and use it, you know? Quote that scripture out loud. You have no problem with that. I really don't. So you're going through a hard time. You're going through temptation. Call out on the Lord and, and, and speak the truth, which is his word. Commit yourself to know the word of God well enough to lean on it. Talk to God about your temptations and then know what he has already said in his word. I pray this helps. God bless. Would you pray for Ryan? The indication I think here is that he's a believer, but he's obviously been caught up in Calvinism. Some of you, you can say, Ryan, I've been there. Would you leave him a comment of encouragement? And for y'all haters, just move on to the next video. This comment section is not for you. I think we should come around our brother here, Ryan, and help him. But if you're similar, if you're saying, you know what, I got some questions like Ryan, reach out to me. And, you know, my focus, you know, you, you want to schedule some phone time? I'll call you. We'll, we'll talk. I want to help you. If, we're, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, I want nothing more for you to walk in truth. As John said, that, that brings much rejoicing. But reach out to us. Questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. I pray today's video has been a help to you. Until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.